user underscore config. Um, and then for my configuration files, and then I'll make another one called output. Um, and so there's all of my, those two directories. Oops, I apologize. Every time I switch screens, I get a notification on my computer. I really need to turn that off. Um, all right, so once I've made the, I'm in my net plus tutorial directory, I've made um, my output and user config directories. Then the next thing is to um, obtain the setup script. So um, this is a setup shell script, which will configure your runtime environment for use with MET plus. Um, and you can also copy over a metplus.com file here. So to do the first one, I'm just going to copy this command um, from the link that I sent. So it's glade p ral jn tp net net plus tutorial files, um, net plus 4.0.0 tutorial files, and then it's called tutorial 4.0.0.conf. And I'm just going to copy it from that directory and rename it to tutorial.conf. Um, so I'll leave this command up for a minute so that everybody can see this. But if you're following along with the um, the word link that I sent, or I'm sorry, the internet link that I sent before, you can just copy and paste that command and it should bring over a tutorial file. That's called tutorial.conf. If I go in that file, there's not much in there, but it will set up um, an output location for that plus. And then, the next step is to choose whether you're using CSH or Bash. Um, you're, you probably are using one by default. Um, you can obviously switch between the two of them. I think I'm TCSH. Yeah, so I'm in TCSH. So I'm gonna copy the command um, for CSH to get, and this is specifically the tutorial setup script. Um, there's a different one. If you're using the bash version, this CSH at the end of the shell will need to switch to bash. And I'm going to bring it over to my tutorial directory and just call it metplus 4.0.0 tutorial setup.sh. So I'm copying it from this Glade P RAL JNTP. Met, met plus tutorial files. So now when I look in my directory, I've got two files, met plus tutorial setup.sh um, and my tutorial.conf and two directories, output and user config. And so I'm ready to actually run the setup scripts. Um, checking in, is everybody able to get all those commands executed successfully? Um, if you're not, you can raise your hand. And let me know you're still working on it. All right. So once we've got those executed successfully, we'll have to navigate. If you're following on the internet page, we need to navigate to ver verify that the environment is set correctly. So the first thing we're going to do is run the tutorial setup script. Um, so you want to make sure you haven't navigated out of your tutorial directory. And then we're just going to do a source on the MET plus tutorial setup script. So I'm going to do a source on this MET plus 4.0.0.0 tutorial setup.sh. Um, and you should get a notification that's started up your um, your NPL environment. Um, most of you on the screen will see an NPL in parentheses to the left of your command line. Um, I apologize. I deactivated that on my screen because I didn't like the way it looked. Um, so it doesn't show up here, but you'll probably see that NPL on your screen. 
And then we can go down and check to make sure that everything has been set up correctly. So we're going to check a number of the paths that are sourced in the data. So the first is to run the which run metplus.py. So run metplus.py is kind of the generic metplus uh, command script that runs everything. So we need to know where it is. Um, and you should get, when you run which run metplus.py, you should get a location. Uh, if you don't get a location, you'll want to deactivate your environment and then try um, sourcing again. Um, by deactivate, I just mean type the deactivate command, just deactivate and then um, you can source it again. So then we can check all the other paths um, that are down there. So if you're familiar with met, I'm going to try just running a met command in this case point set. Um, and of course, I got an error message because I gave point stat no arguments, but it found point stat. So that's what I wanted to see here is that it found it and it tried to run it. Uh, and there were no errors. Um, so then the second set of instructions is to check to see that the environment variables required to run the tutorial instructions are set correctly. So um, there's several environment variables that are set in the uh, activation script. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to try and set those up. So let's do echo dollars and parentheses, net plus, I think it's tutorial dir. Um, and then I can do an ls. Whoops, that's not an L. Try again. Um, on the Met Plus tutorial there, and I should see the directories that are in my current directory. So, so it correctly identified them. Um, and then I'm going to check the Met Plus build base. So. And I can do an LF on this to find the contents of this directory. And um, Met plus build base is kind of the Met plus directory. So you should see essentially something similar to what printed on my screen here, build components, CI docs, uh, manage externals, internal tasks, um, that whole listing of things. Um, and then I need to check to see that it found the met directory. So I'm just going to do an echo on met. I think it's met build. Met build base. Met build base. Um, and I can do a listing on that. And I should see um, something that looks like it does down here, which contains directories for um, running met. And then um, the last thing I want to do is check the contents of the met bin directory. So the met bin directory is where all the, the executables for met are. So I'm going to do another met build base slash, I believe it's slash bin. Yes, minus one. Um, and then these are all the Met executables, um, starting with ASCII to NC and going down to with my regrid. Uh, I should get a listing that looks something like that. So um, I guess there is uh, a Met, Met plus build base. Oh, no, we already did that one. Um, so then the last one would be Met plus data. So this would be the data directory that we need to run. Um, I can't type, it's too early. Um, okay. Metplus data. Dir. What did I do? Oh, it's just Metplus data. Okay. Metplus data. And then you 
you should see MET tests in model applications. So that's the data we'll be using to run MET plus when we actually get to that. So um, did anybody have any issues with any of these steps? Were you able to get them running, get your environment set up? Yeah, everything works fine. Yep. Excellent, great. Um, so those are kind of the steps we're, we were just gonna go through today to get the environment set up and everything working. Um, I mean, we have about five minutes left if anybody has other questions. Um, Is there a sort of a summary of what all the um, executables do, like just a brief listing and a description? Uh, which executables? The MET executables? Yeah, the bin, in the bin directory there. So um, that would all be in the MET help document. The problem is it's not a small document, um, but those are essentially all the different executables for the various different MET codes, like um, point stat, grid stat. Um, so I could point you to the MET plus directory, but... Um, so people don't tend to run those like on command line or... So you can run those on the command line, but what, um, so when you're running MET, what often happens is you're running just one time step. But usually in verification, we're running to one, or, or sorry, we're wanting to run like multiple time steps in a row. So what MET plus does is it creates kind of a loop. It uses um, Python and creates looping to um, go over the time period that you want to run and it calls those programs from your MET plus script. So um, running through MET plus, you won't be calling those directly, but you could if you were running it in a different way. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. I mean, essentially, I mean, if you're trying to run through like a month's worth of data or something like that, it's going to have to be scripted in some way. Yeah. And Met Plus will do all that scripting for you. Mm. Cool. Um, so you give it like an input and an output, and this is stuff that we'll be talking about in future sessions. You give it like a start time and an end time and like a time frequency and you know which programs you want to run and several input variables. And it does all of that time scripting for you. So okay. you won't actually have to call the Met um, the MET executables yourself, but it will be calling them from MET Plus. So we still wanted to verify that it was in the path, the directory. Gotcha. I guess I was just wondering about the overall functionality and what each, each thing did, but I guess we'll find that out as we go along. Yeah, and it's, um, let me see. Um, did you see, it looks like there's another question. I haven't forgotten about it in the chat. Um, so the um, documentation. So all of that, uh, it's too comprehensive for me to, to talk about right now, but I will put a link in the chat. Um, so that's the documentation on MET. And there should be sections for each one of those hmm. uh, commands. So some of them are like sub uh, categorize. So like, I believe that PCP combine and regrid data plane are in like the section on regridding gridded or on like reformatting input data and stuff like that. But there should, there's like sections for each of those met uh, commands in the documents there. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so then it looks like I got another question. Do we need to source the MET plus SH for each session that we intend to run MET plus, right? Yes. Unless you haven't logged out if you, you know, if you left your session up, but if you've logged out, you'll need to resource that script for each session, but you won't need to recreate the directories because they should still be there. Um, Um, I actually haven't tried this. So the question is similar to the previous. If we deactivate the NPL environment and the next time when we use MET plus, um, 
or just activate the NPS. Um, my guess is knowing what's inside the script that you just would need to reactivate the NPL environment. Um, but I haven't actually tried that on my own. Um, so I'm not 100% sure to the output or to my um, my environment always activates itself when I log into Cheyenne because I've got it set in a, in a TCSH setup script. So. Um, all right. So are there any last questions before we. Um, before we uh, end for the day. Oh, I think it's a good start. Okay, all right, then, um, yeah, okay, thanks. Just uh, check the SH script. Yes, that's what I think is that you should be fine if you don't log out of Cheyenne uh, with just reactivating. But, um, but like I said, I haven't tried it, so it, it's possible that that's not the correct answer. But um, if there aren't any more questions, then we can, um, then we can, uh, dismiss for the day and I suppose next week will be the next session where we'll get into actually uh, doing more with uh, Met plus so thank you Tina, all right can I, can I can I just ask it one last question yeah sure yeah so now I'm just asking like I know that this tutorial series it's uh it's planned over many weeks so are are there instructions up on the website for all those series? Like if somebody's really impatient like me and want to try those first. <laughs> um, I believe <laughs> if you keep going through the tutorial that they should uh -huh. all be up. Now, I don't know if we've gotten, I don't know how far we've gotten to posting them. I know the next few sessions okay. are up. Um, all right. But but yeah, but I, I don't know that like some of the later ones are yet. <laughs> Sounds good, thank you. Yeah, sure. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for joining the Thank tutorial. You. Thank you. So I think we could probably stop the recording now. Um, I don't seem to have the ability to stop the recording. I don't know why.